All right. Good evening, everybody. I'm your host, Reverend Samantha Tree Walker, the Order of Standing Oak, and of the Raven Temple of CX Wicca. And I uh, hope everybody's doing good. Uh, we are picking up tonight with Night Magic Part 2. This is an ongoing series where we talk about magic, how to do it, why we do it, what are some of the things that are important about magic. And very first part, I gave you some of the ideas of some of the things that are ma magical things and situations. Uh, and we're going into some deeper looking at that. And tonight we're talking about enchantment, charms, spells, and incantations. But before we do that, I encourage everybody out there to take a minute and do what I'm going to do. I have a bottle of fresh mead here. And we are going to, because we're adults here and it's Friday night, we're going to take a minute and open it up. Right. And then we just press the arms down. And wobble it off. And if you'd like to, go ahead and join me for a beverage yourselves. We're going to go ahead and pour some of this into a glass. All right, then. And we're going to give her a taste. Cheers. Oh, man. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Let me get another drink here. All right. Okay. So... When looking at magic and what it is, you kind of have to start with the basics, and we're going to go through some of those things tonight. Uh, a lot of things that we are that we uh, know that are magical come from the real world. As an example, the first thing we're going to talk about are enchantments. And the greatest amount of enchantments that you will find are in children's stories, Grimm's fairy tales, uh, even Snow White and the Seven Dwarves when uh, the, the witch queen took the apple and uh, made it poison so that uh, Snow White would sleep and can, couldn't wake up until she was kissed. She enchanted that apple. And enchantment is a practice that has gone on for many years, hundreds of years in Victorian times and so on and so forth. And one of the things that is kind of a, uh, a main feature of what enchantment is, is it's, it's not that you're asking for something. Enchantment is putting a magical order on something, such as whenever uh, the uh, Wicked Witch Queen put the enchantment on the apple to poison Snow White, it, it's putting a magical situation on an object. Um, another thing is like whenever you put uh, protection around your home, that's an enchantment. Okay, I'm sorry if you guys hear some loud noises. I do live next to a train track, so we're going to have to deal with that. It's Friday night. But anyway, so whenever you are whenever you are 
doing protection uh, for things uh, whenever you are uh, wanting to send something with somebody that, you know, for healing and stuff, you're enchanting that item. You're putting the magic into it. Okay. Um, and that's one of the main things. That's one of the main deals about what enchantment is. Um, and one of the things that I recommend is that you get the Gr book of Grimm's fairy tales and you read them and you will see so many uh, examples of enchantment that are possible to be used that's one thing is like if you look like i say a lot of the stuff that we get for our magical practice and stuff comes from the real world so if you can uh find some of these then it's like you can adapt them to to modern use okay it's not there's nothing that says you can't and there are books on enchantment out there so i highly recommend that you look into them because then that way you can you know find out for yourself some of the ways to do it um and in our next episode of night magic we're going to talk about the tools and the methods that are being that are used for various types of magic so we're going to go into the we're going to be going into uh the ideas and everything and what you'll need or what you might need because everybody's different on how they will work their their own magic but it's like you know when this next when we do the next episode it'll be that so that way that the stuff that i'm telling you about now and i've told you about in the first episode you can put that to practice so we have enchantment over here in it's in its place Next, we have charms. One of the most uh, well-known places that you find charms are charm bracelets. Now they look cute and everything, but they do have their 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 purpose. Charms and charm bracelets are kind of like things that you can carry with you like a charm is a rabbit lucky rabbit's foot uh, a charm is a, a, a upright horseshoe above your door um and and things like that but also uh another thing a lot of deals with charms are things that are written as an example in the old uh, uh mesopotamian days they had what was known as a tornado charm and it was rolled up and kept in a tube and put into a, a pouch or whatever around their neck. And on that, where we get the idea of the tornado charm, is we start up here with the word abracadabra. And then underneath that, you write abracadabra without uh, abracadab and br without the A. And then you just keep writing the word and removing the last letter of what you had from above so that it goes from the top and it goes to the down until you get all the way down to the letter a and it looks like an upside down triangle it's a tornado and you can do that with any word like wealth w-e-a-l-t-h w-e-a-l-t w-e-a-l w-e-a w-e w and have that and take it with you and put it in a pouch or put it in something. And that can be uh, uh, an important charm to have with you. Another thing is some of the, the planetary sigils that people carry with them, such as the, the, the planetary sigils of, of Mars, the cameos of Saturn and things like that. Those are deals that are written, drawn, and then inscribed on charm size objects that a person can carry with them that's the main thing enchantments are what you put on things things the things that you carry are the charms that have been enchanted so kind of to a degree they go hand in hand um so we have that uh let me take a drink and let me just welcome everybody here uh we're having fun with doing these videos but also we want to be 
informative to you and stuff like that and give you guys some ideas about things on how to start your magical practice. Now, the next part is the one that everybody's into. Spells. And the main thing about spells, if you really look at it, it's not just the things that you use for the spell, but what you're doing with the spell. So in other words, a lot of people will have an altar or a table or a, a box or just something set up where they can set some items. They can be candles. They can be stones. They can be anything. And we're going to talk about, we're going to break down into some of the more uh, uh, different types and stuff beyond that. In another video, like candle magic, cords, stone magic, things like that. But what you're using is you're using these items to represent certain things that you want to achieve or that, 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 uh, that they kind of like coalesce for the whole of what it is that you want to achieve. And then you are either lighting the candles or chanting over the stones or doing these different things. And what you're doing is you are connecting with the energies of the earth and of the universe to get that thing that you want to have happen. It's working our will in accordance with change and the laws of the universe. Uh, you know, as the idea of like working with karma, if you work a spell that goes and also ethics, when you work a spell against someone against their will, you will reap the whirlwind. You may have things happen that you've never had happen before. So when you're, when you're casting spells, you have to be very, very careful about what you do. And what we will do for, for one episode of uh, the show, Night Magic, I will cast a spell and show you how that works. Um, but also, there's another thing that's very important what you say whenever you're casting the spell, if you're chanting, if you are making a supplication to a deity, asking for them to help, words are very important. Um, the, the construction of sentences and words and stuff, that's where we get the idea of spelling. Not spelling, putting a word together, but the, the ancients believed that words had power. And so it's like, whenever you, whenever you uttered a word, the energy came from you and, it, you know, whatever is going to happen, if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. But with spells, they're a little bit more intense. They're a little bit more focused. Okay. So it's like the idea of uh, not a love spell, but let's say health. Um, you have broken your leg and you want to recover faster so you can do things to, you know, get your energy level back, to get your bones to mend and all these different deals. And what you do is you put that out there. I want to be healed. I want to be healed. I want my legs to come together in the right way so that I can walk and continue my life. And what you're doing is you're reaffirming that energy through the things that you have assembled to focus that energy. That's another thing. The implements that you use during spell casting are visual cues about what it is that you're trying to achieve. But also it's like magnifying a battery, taking just a little bit of energy and turning it up, making it more powerful, making it more effective. Um, uh, and so that's another thing. So I, I say that you know, people that are afraid of casting spells, here's the deal. I, whenever I very first cast my very first spell, my thing was I was afraid that I was going to do it wrong. So here's the deal. If it's for your intent and for what you're doing and you're not doing it maliciously, the idea with that is, is the fact that you're doing it to the best of your ability, okay? So the powers that be, the gods or whatever, because I'm, all, I'm, I'm a pagan spellcaster in the fact that I include the gods in all of my spells because 
I want all the energy I can get. So the gods that I that I worship and follow, I bring them into the mix because that gives everything a little bit more of a of a of a bump. But it's like you know, people are so scared of you know I'm afraid I'll do something wrong and whatever. So it's like whenever you fall off a bike, you do it again, and eventually the thing that you want will come to fruition or if it doesn't at least you can try to find out you know through divination and other things that would that would you know why is this not working because you know it's like it's we can't twitch our nose and make things happen we don't have that power not yet i do believe that you could have that power i believe that we all should have that power but Magic is proactive. You have to work it. And, you know, that's why people say, well, if you're a witch, why can't you win the lottery? There are witches that have won the lottery. Uh, there are witches that have won cars and all these things. And part of it might have been magical. And the other part is just the energy of the universe, you know, being a part of what they are. So it's like, you know, you can't discredit the fact just because somebody is a pagan or a witch that there isn't something magical whenever they have something positive happen. Now, also, on, on the backside of that is if you do some malicious magic against somebody, if you cast a, a, a darker spell where you wish harm to somebody, you better figure that everything that you're going to put out for that is like, um, it's, it's going to come back to you. It may come back to you threefold, sixfold, ninefold, fifteenfold, twenty-onefold. You never know because of, you know, how the universe is going to work with you. But, you know, don't be afraid to work magic. Don't be afraid to cast a spell. If you think you messed it up, then go over, look at your timing, look at the astrological uh, correspondences and things that go with it. Look at the materials that you use for the spell. And like I said, in the next episode, uh, this one's going to be kind of short tonight. We're just going to keep it right on topic. And I'm going to try not to uh, try not to meander too much. But the next episode, we are going to get hands on. I'm going to start showing you guys some of the materials and things that we use. And then the next one of the next episodes after that, we will get into the practical application of what a spell looks like. That I probably will have to film. I won't be able to do that live over Zoom, but I can at least film it and stuff and show you what that looks like because I have a camera that I can use and uh, give you guys an idea of what a spell looks like. And we're going to drink some of this beautiful mead here. Oh, man, that is wonderful. This is red raspberry mead. It is beautiful. And of course, we got the train going by. So the last thing, one of the things that is kind of important that a lot of people don't think of whenever we are uh, uh, working with magic, casting spells, meditating, and other things we have the idea of incantations. Incantations are spoken words where you are uttering from your mouth the things that you're looking for. So as an example, an incantation would be something like, all shall be well, all shall be well. All manner of things shall be well. All shall be well. All shall be well. All manner of things shall be well. And you keep going. That's a chant. That's an incantation. You also have the idea of, of um, like, Another type of incantation could be like, by the light of the moon, I ask that the gods bring to me a good paycheck 
so that I can pay off my car. And you keep saying that over and over and over again. It's a chant. It's an affirmation. And it's an incantation because you're putting energy into those words to get the thing that it is that you want. So when you look at it, when you look at all of these things, you have, you have the enchantment, which goes on to a thing. Usually, there are different types. There's, there's just as many different types of enchantments as there are you know, types of magic pretty much. So, but that's one of the main things. So you have the idea of, of enchanting something where you're enchanting a thing, okay? Then you have the charms, which charms are the things, items, paper, or whatever that have been inscribed usually. A lot of charms are written. Uh, the sin eaters, the, uh, uh, the Jewish people that have the little black box on their head, they write their sins and roll them up into a tiny scroll, and they set them on to the, the inside of the box, and they believe that the, all those sins will be taken away by God. That's, that's a form of charm, the sin eaters. Um, so you have, you have the charm aspects. And then you move into the realm that everybody is, is always looking for in the idea of what is spell casting and spelling, spells. Whenever we speak, that's one of the main things. Bardic inspiration, bardic singing, bardic song, excuse me, bardic song magic. Those are spells. Um, and there are many different kinds of spells that go into that realm. Um, and then you look at the things that kind of bring it together. You can do incantations whenever you are casting a circle, working a spell, and there are incantations for other things whenever you're welcoming the day or uh, saying good night to the night and these different things. These are all incantations. So you have the four kind of bedrocks in what is the different types of magic out there. And then there are others that I've talked about, which I highly recommend everybody go check out Night Magic Part 1, the introduction to all of this. And pretty soon we're going to be doing Night Magic Part 3. And like I've said before, we may try to do this be weekly, bi-weekly, uh, what have you. Um, but I just wanted to take this short little bit of time and kind of give you some guys stuff. And go to Amazon, go online. Look up these terms. There are books that speak on incantations. There are many, many, many spell books. Too many to list. I've got a bunch of them over here on my on in my bookcases. Um, there are books on enchantment. There are books on charms. Uh, one of the one of my favorites is by Trish 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 Telesco, and it's called Folkways. And it's about that thick. You're going to have more stuff in there than you're ever going to need to work with. Um, but that's one thing is like magic is important. So don't be afraid. Work it. Speak the incantations. Work the spells. Uh, create the enchantments. Create charms for yourself. And create charms for your kids. Create charms for your friends. Do these things because, like I say, uh, magic is a spiritual muscle. And the more that you use it, the more um, that you'll just benefit. Okay. And that's why we do this as magicians, pagans, witches, druids, all these different things. So I just want to say thank you guys for hanging me out, hanging out with me for just a little bit. Uh, we are putting this up on a pagan perspective on YouTube. And I ask that you like, comment, subscribe, show the video to your friends. And we're trying to grow the channel. So if you would, I would like to ask you at this time, if you would consider being a Patreon on my Patreon, all you got to do is go to www.patreon.com forward slash a pagan perspective. And we've got three different tiers. And what we do is what we're trying to do is to get better equipment for the channel. And some of the things that you get from the uh, Patreon is uh, you get shout outs. Matter of fact, the shout outs for this video, we want to say a shout out to our Patreon patrons, Alex McVeigh and Pam Forbes. Thank you guys so much. You do uh, so much for the channel. I appreciate your friendship and your help. But yeah, go to Patreon. And I also do readings. 
We're going to have merch here pretty soon. We do giveaways, which we've got a giveaway for 600 subscribers coming up, which I am going to be doing a video for that pretty soon. We've got videos for men's mysteries coming up. Um, we've got a video about Samhain that I'm probably going to be doing this week. So we've got a lot of things coming up. And if you would see it in your heart to help support the channel of Paying Perspective uh, on Patreon, then it would be greatly uh, appreciated. And I just want to say that I love all of my subscribers. and I love all of you out there that take the time to, you know, check these things out. I'm just a guy that's out there, you know, trying to put this information and to do things with our, our people here for uh, the uh, Order Standing Oak and Raven Temple of CX Wicca. We have so much coming up. We've got drummings coming up. We've got Samhain coming up. We've got new moon and full moon classes coming up. And in December, we've got Yule. We're doing our first outside ritual. We've done a lot of rituals inside, but we're, we've got a place and we're going to be doing Yule outdoors with a fire and everything. It's going to be beautiful. So we've got a lot of things coming up and just, uh, you know, help support the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, join Patreon. And as usual, I'm your host, Reverend Savannah Treewalker of the Order of Standing Oak and Raven Temple of CX Wicca. Uh, have a great weekend and I will see you guys in the next video.